This video is part of Consumer Theory. In it, I'll show you how to use our Consumer Theory model to consider simultaneous changes in price and income. Up until now, we've only considered what happens to a consumer's utility maximizing bundle when there's a change in price or a change in income. But what if both price and income change at the same time? Consider the following example. Suppose the average household in a state consumes 800 gallons of gasoline per year. A 20 cent gas tax is introduced, coupled with a $160 annual tax rebate per household. Will the household be better or worse off after the new program? So in this example, we have a 20 cent gas tax, which effectively increases the price of gas and at the same time, we have a $160 rebate, which increases the household's income. If we consider the tax only, we know that increasing the price of gas through a tax will rotate the budget line inward, which will make the consumer worse off because his affordable set will shrink by all these bundles here. How this tax affects his consumption of gas depends on the substitution and income effects of the price change caused by the tax. At the same time, when we consider only the rebate, we know that a rebate by increasing income will expand the consumer's budget set by all these bundles here, unambiguously making the consumer better off. When gas is a normal good, the rebate will increase consumption of gas because the consumer will feel richer and therefore buy more normal goods. However, when we put the tax and the rebate together, what we see is that the budget set doesn't just go up or down. To the left of this crossing point, the budget set expands by the tax and rebate combined. All these bundles are now affordable, whereas they weren't before. But on the other hand, to the right of the crossing point, the affordable set shrinks. All these bundles are now not affordable, whereas they were before. So we see that when changing price and income, looking at what happens to the consumer's budget set and so her affordable set isn't as clear cut. We'll solve this problem in class. For now, let's take a look at a second example. Consider a consumer who maximizes her utility by consuming housing and entertainment each year. While living in North Carolina, she faces this budget constraint and chooses the bundle S on indifference curve one. Now suppose her employer wants her to relocate from North Carolina to California where the price of housing is more expensive. Increasing the price of housing will therefore cause her budget line to rotate inward, shrinking her affordable set. Knowing this, suppose her employer decides to increase her income enough to make the bundle she chose before the move still affordable after the move. Increasing her income will now shift her budget line out moving it to budget line LL. Notice that her new budget line is steeper than her old budget line, reflecting the higher price of housing in California, and the new budget line is exactly going through bundle S, the bundle she chose before the move. That's again because her employer specifically gave her enough additional income to make what she chose in North Carolina still attainable in California. However, bundle S, though affordable, is no longer optimal. Bundle S is on the consumer's new budget line, but it's not a point of tangency anymore. In fact, we see that at point S, the consumer's indifference curve is flatter than her budget line, so her MRS is smaller than her MRT, meaning she gets a smaller bang per buck from the good on the x-axis, here housing, and a larger bang per buck from the good on the y-axis, here entertainment. 
She therefore chooses a new bundle moving towards entertainment and away from housing. The consumer could choose S, but she won't because by choosing bundle I on an even higher indifference curve, she's better off. Another way to think of it is that the loss in purchasing power the consumer experiences due to the higher price of housing is exactly offset by the increase in purchasing power caused by the higher income. So in moving from S to I, the consumer's really responding to a change in the relative price of housing, holding purchasing power constant. This sounds a lot like a substitution effect, but the substitution effect technically would be responding to the change in the relative price of housing holding not purchasing power constant, but instead utility. Let's look at that next. To see the true substitution effect, return to bundle S, the bundle the consumer was buying in North Carolina before she was relocated. The relocation to California increased the price of housing, rotating her budget line in. Now suppose the employer wants to compensate the employee for this loss in purchasing power. But now compensating means increasing her income enough to restore her utility to the same level achieved at bundle S, rather than giving her enough income to allow bundle S to still be affordable. The increase in income that she'll need to restore her utility is represented by this movement from the green budget line to the dotted budget line. This dotted budget line is the compensated budget line. The compensated budget line is the budget line the consumer would need after the price of housing changes to compensate her for this price change or to keep her at the same level of utility as before the price changed. So what we can see here is that before when the employer wanted to give the consumer enough income to make bundle S still affordable, they were in fact giving her more money than they needed to keep her as well off, thereby making her better off. The employer didn't have to give her quite as much money to move her to bundle I star, the bundle that would keep her as well off as she was at S. Moving from S to I star is the substitution effect here. Holding utility constant and responding to the change in the slope of the budget line the consumer substitutes away from housing and towards entertainment.